I wanted to go on a vacation to the Caribbean and like I was looking at the map in one of the islands and I was like like oh like there's the biggest island in the Caribbean but we're not allowed to go there and so that was kind of like the the driving like motivating you know I was like you know, I was pretty young I was like in my 20s so I was like still had like you know still idealized like the work of Che Guevara and like the work against like you know you know racist policies and so I really wanted to like see like this multiracial multicultural um I don't like I'd read all these things and I wanted to see what what was true Uh, so I went to Cuba back in 1999, I guess, or 2000. And uh, at the time, you, the way to go to Cuba from the United States as a United States citizen, you had to go from another country. My original plan was to travel all across the island, but whenever I left the United States and landed in the Bahamas, as I was landing, the plane to Cuba or to Havana was leaving, and so I ended up having to stay the night in the Bahamas, so that blew my budget for traveling outside of Havana. Uh, to get from the Bahamas to Cuba, uh, just to complain. When you get to Havana or get to Cuba as with a U.S. passport, they don't stamp your passport. They put a, um, a little ticket in there. My first thought, thought when I, I got to Cuba was, uh, Kind of like wonder and like ma like magic. I was like, oh, like I'm I'm in Cuba. And second in my mind was like, get settled in, so then I can then go start exploring Havana. Um, the taxi driver took me to this house. They call them casa particulars, and so that you stay in a home. So I went and stayed at the place that he dropped me off at, and it was like this older lady and. She sucked, like the whole house, like it sucked. So I was out on the street and met this guy and he was like, oh, you should come like, how much are you paying? I told him and he's like, he's like, oh, the guy from the airport dropped you off. I was like, yeah, he's like, no, come stay at my sister's house. He said, so I went to this lady's house called Mamita and she, and it was completely different. Like people were like cooking meals together and like eating and like we were watching TV together. So it was a whole different like, atmosphere at this place. I just chilled in, in the neighborhood I was in, um, hung out with, with people that I met, and I really wanted to like get out into the city and like see the historic sites and see some of the really old buildings. I think one of the first things I wanted to check out was a thing called the Malacon, which is like the, the seawall and like the waves come up and splash up on top of the, the seawall and, and like people are always like hanging out, eating ice cream, playing music. And so I really wanted to see like that, like sense of like, you know, people just hanging out in Havana. So well, like I spent a lot of time going to like the University of Havana, seeing some of the monuments there. So there's lots of really cool monuments for Cuban resistance to like, Spanish colonialism. And so like seeing like the, the monument to Maceo, who was like this great military leader that fought the Spanish back in the day. It's a big place and so there's like there's all these like different districts within the city like these super old like UNESCO world sites which are like heritage sites designated by the international community that these are like significant culturally significant buildings and so like you've got this architecture that's been there you know for 500 years and it's like amazing the church is still operated the Catholic churches the, there was a synagogue that I went and go see there was a mosque there and there was a whole history they had an archive of like uh, Muslims that had migrated immigrated to Cuba back in the day just like the monuments and like the like the cultural amenities or cultural like institutions I wanted to see that stuff lots of lots of monuments I saw when it's time to leave they, they took my the ticket back out of my passport and then I flew to the Bahamas went through customs in the Bahamas and they stamped my passport. So it looked, when you looked at my passport, it said, I had arrived in the Bahamas at this date. And then all of a sudden I arrived in the Bahamas at this date. So like I arrived twice with two weeks apart. 
I would like to go back to Cuba at some point. Um, yeah, I think that that would be really, I th really interesting to see. Anytime I've ever traveled out of the country for a little bit of time, whenever I, whenever I come back, like everything looks different and everything seems a little bit different. Things seem a little bit simpler. It's really interesting to come back and like there's all these resources and, and I can literally in this day and time pretty much pretty much do whatever I, I want to with my life. I always feel like it's important whenever I come back from outside the country to take advantage of like the opportunities that we have here. No matter where I go, mostly I always want to be in East Tennessee. So like for me, the, the main thing is like, okay, this was nice. This was really great to see and important for me to learn about, but like I miss, I miss East Tennessee. East Tennessee is the best place on, on the planet Earth to me.